welcome to the very first episode of the Campus Muslim Show. This is a podcast series produced by Jimsa K University. On here, we are going to be discussing societal issues and issues pertaining to the Muslim students in the university environment. So get ready for eye-opening discussions and heartfelt narratives straight from the voices of Muslim students. My name is Amina Nelson. I'm your host for today. And I'm here with three incredible guests who have graciously accepted to be here with us to share their perspectives with us on the topic for today. So I'm here with Usama Abbas. He's a fourth year actual science student. He's the speaker for the KNUST Students Parliament and the chief imam for Jimsa KNUST. He's also the former vice president of Jimsa KNUST, the examination officer and a tutor at Mobile Quran Institute here in KNUST. He's also a student of Madrasa Tul Umariya in UK and he's the CEO of Halal Farms. That's quite a good profile. So you are welcome. Thank you so much. I'm so privileged being here. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for thanking me. So we also have Mohammed Khalil Rahman. He's a third year computer engineering student, a software engineering student at ALX. He is the chairman for the Gentleman's Hub and the deputy chairman for the Educational Committee of Jim Sakian UST. He's also a student of the International Open University and a student of the Mobile Plan Institute. And then lastly, he is the crew head and the bootcamp coordinator for the IT and Media Committee of James University. Khalil, you are welcome. Thank you very much. For you to have such a pro- uh, profile in third year. I have to say, Alhamdulillah. Okay, we are moving to the only lady among the guests, our sister, Zaitou Nabwakar Samori. She's a fourth year law student. She is the former Judicial Chairperson of Jim Sakian UST and the former General Secretary for the Law Students Union. She's also a student here at MQI. She's also a student at the Mobile Grant Institute here in KNUST and she's a member of the KNUST Students Parliament. Thank you, you're welcome. Thank you. Thank you for taking me again. So, audience, you can see that we have very wonderful guests here. So get ready, stick and stay with us as we delve into the topic for today. So today we are going to explore the art of being a holistic student. Our guests are going to explain to us what being a holistic student means and how to be a holistic student. So let's get in. So my first question goes to Khalil. Khalil, when we say um, a holistic student, what does it mean for one to be called a holistic student? You are a holistic student, that's why you've been invited here. So what makes you a holistic student? Okay. So to talk about being a holistic student, you know as human beings first, we have various dimensions of our life. So being students, and especially Muslims. You have your social life, you have your religious life, then the academic life also comes to play. So being holistic is to be able to balance, to integrate all these dimensions of life such that there will be balance in your life. You not let one aspect put you down such that you neglect the other dimensions of your life. So to be able to schedule your activities very well, manage your time, and create, create a balanced life, so that you achieve your goals, come back from set up and setbacks, everything. So basically, being a holistic student is to incorporate all these dimensions of your life, so that you be a happy student or a successful individual. Yes. So being a holistic student is basically integrating your academic, religious, and social life. Exactly. Okay. But we know that we are here in the university basically for our academics. And then you are mentioning adding social life and then religious life. Um, Usama, why do you think it is important that as a university student, you are supposed to have a balanced life, including, apart from your academics, you have to have a religious life and a social life. Why is it important? 
Well, Bismillah wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulillah wa ba'd. I think, first of all, let me augment what my brother said when we see a holistic student. The word actually is whole, holistic, right? And so you are trying to integrate all facets of your development. First of all, the academia, because that is the primary reason why you are here. And don't, not forgetting the fact that you are Muslim. And so we add that to your academia and then your social life as well. And so when we, when we put all these together to give us that holistic Muslim that you are talking about in this context. But then, if you have to do it, then you are doing it because we have a goal that we want to achieve in life. That is why we have to integrate all these together. I don't know whether you get yeah, what I mean. get you. Interesting. So, yeah. why is it important that I need to build my social life, I need to build my religious life? Why is it important? Because it's definitely once you're a human being, you have to fit into an ecosystem, right? You are not, they say, in fact, let me take the word from our own language. We, call, we are called insan. The root word is an uns. When we say uns, it means something that cannot exist on its own. So as a human being, you can't live alone. Like they say, man is not an island, right? So you have to get the people around you, then you build a force together. That is the essence why you should have a, a relationship with the people you have in society. Do you get it? Interesting. Okay. So, um, Zaytun, when we say social life as a student, what encompasses your social life? Okay, so when I hear that that phrase, social life, so the first thing that will usually pop up is you having like a relationship with your colleagues or your mates from class and your people from whichever denomination you are part of, be it. Um, at the mosque, in the church, and other things. But then when you come to the university um, community, if you are actually going to be talking about social life, it's it's very broad. Yes. Because there are other activities that the university has um, brought out for students like engaging. So you can actually do your debating, you can be part of PSPH, that's our brother here, the speaker of the um, the debate society. Debate society. Yeah. There are a lot of a lot of um, um, activities on campus that you can engage in. So being when you talk about social life, it's you shouldn't scenario yourself to a relationship with your roommates, your classmates and all those things. But you have to go a step further. You have to engage yourself in all those activities. You have to be going for seminars, gym star programs, you have to be involving yourself in a lot of things that will be beneficial to you. Because in the long run, it adds up to your personal development, yes. which is very important mm -hmm. if you go out in your working um, space, in the working world, you need all those things. So that is what I understand by social life. Okay, that's quite insightful. So in the university environment, in this key university environment that we find ourselves in, um, Khalid, do you think it's possible for one to attain holisticity? Like, is it possible for you to be able to balance your academics, your religion, and your social life on campus here? Is it possible? Yeah, it is very possible. But actually, it's not easy. Yes, yeah. it's very, very possible. But, you know, everything that is good, it's difficult for you to attain it. You have to discipline yourself and do all that it requires for you to do it. So I'll, I'll say yes, you have to be able to do what you have to do. It is very possible. So I think so that's So you think the university environment accommodates that like, it, it's, it will help you to be able to attain that? Exactly, just like my sister said, the university has put a lot in place, like the debate societies, that's, that will pass and contribute to your social life. And within the setup, so we have various religious bodies, and as far as we are Muslims, Jinsa is here for us. And we have programs that will help us come here and interact. We create the social life. Then, out of these programs, too, we have um, programs that will not help us or that will not put us in a situation where we will transgress. So that, that also brings in the social life, sorry, the religious life. So this alone has helped you to manage your social relations, 
as well as your regions like us, your academics, which the lecturers, and your course mates also bring. So there are a lot in place for you to develop a holistic life as a student. Okay, so audience, that means that you don't have an option. You can you can have that, so you can have that holistic life here. You don't have you don't have an excuse, yes. It's possible. So for for you to be able to have that holistic life, right? That means that you are combining academics, religion, social life. It's it's tasking. And we know that um it's not easy, right? So is multitasking a good thing to do, Usama? Do you think it's good to multitask? Because well, you end up lacking in one space than the other. I don't know. Uh, I don't give you this is a tough, a, a tough one because I wish to even say in the first place it is easy to do all these things that I'm mentioning, be a holistic Muslim. I wish to say it is very easy, but then the fact of it is, it is, it is not easy at all, right? But then when it comes to the level of difficulty in it as well, it is bent on you, the individual yourself. First of all, you have to appreciate the person you are in person before you think about doing all these things. There is someone, frankly, the person just can't combine anything apart from his academia. Okay. <laughs> That's how some people are. There is someone who can do academia and social life, and he's okay. There is another who can do all these things and still cope in the university environment. Okay. You get it. But for us here, I think most of us are able to do to some extent, but then we ask ourselves, to what level of productivity are we able to do it? That then brings a the question of multitasking. Personally, I feel that it's something I do a lot. Because I find myself sometimes in situations where I must do everything at the same time. Perhaps I'll have to cite some few examples in my life when I have to do that. There are times that I have to submit assignments with deadline. And I have to come and do some presentations here in the Islamic Center. And just after also have to do some committee meetings, especially when I was vice president last year. Right? They could give an assignment and I have to submit around say 11:59 p.m. And maybe that particular day I have to come and present in the Islamic Center. And after I was being a vice president, you know, in charge of almost all committees, you have to witness some committee activities before you leave. And so sometimes the timing becomes so close and you have to think very smartly. To be able to do one of the things at the same time, mm-hmm. you get it. And so once you're able to figure that ability within you, then it's bent on how you do it effectively. And so we can actually do it, but it's not just easy. Someone can break down entirely wanting to multitask because it depends on the ability that you have within you to be able to do it. So in conclusion, you are saying that you should know yourself. Yes. and then know what works for you, but exactly. it's possible. In fact, I remember during the election last year for vice presidential position, I was asked that question. Okay. You know, then I was an imam, even before I became vice president. And so then I was asked, so I'm an imam, and I want to be vice president. And here's my academics as well. How, how can I combine all this? Mm-hmm. And then the easiest reference I could cite was Chen Bosu, for example. Okay. He was an imam and he was vice president in his time, so I could just easily make a reference to him. Okay. But then, as well, later I could think about things more deeply and introspect that it's actually not easy like that. Because there are times that you have to make very critical decisions, but still, you can't break off from one and leave the other. And so, we have to multitask. Okay. Yeah. So, from your profiles, we can tell that you are all doing a lot of things at the same time. So you are all going to give me answers on how you manage your time, how you are able to accommodate all the things that you do. How do you do it? So I'll start from there too. Yeah, so it actually looks easy. Like as all of us are talking, it looks like it's an easy thing to combine social, religious, and academia. But in fact, it is not, it's not a very easy thing. So there are two things that I would say I live by. That is the first thing is plan, plan your time, plan your time, plan your schedule. And the second thing too is to be consistent. 
So in planning your schedule, you know there are three things involved right now. You have your academia, you have your religious life, you have your social life. Okay. And the most important thing, obviously, is your religious life. Okay. So all other things are going to be tailored towards your time, the time you have for your religious activities. So after you um, start down, you take all the slots for maybe for your solar, you take the slots for your um, recitation of Quran, you want to listen to Islamic podcasts, you take um, Islamic YouTube videos you take. Then you come to um, your academia, the times you have lectures, you fit them in where they are supposed to. Because usually your um, religious activity, your salah will not clash with your class. But even if it does, it's rarely, it barely does. So after you take all those times, then you check your free time. The free time you have, that is where you incorporate the social activities you can involve yourself with. But doing all those things, you have to be very mindful. You don't have to um, get yourself overwhelmed with a lot of things. So after you plan that your schedule, that suits your ability, that suits your capacity, then the next thing is, is to be very um, consistent with it, right? So you stay with your plan or your schedule. Because if you are not, if you have a plan, and you are not consistent with it, it's a zero way. It's yes. nothing. Yes. You wouldn't achieve anything at the end. Because at the time you are supposed to do something that is related to religion, you don't do it. Then you see that the times are entering into other things. And in the long run, you are solving social life. You are always in your room reading, 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 reading. And you can't read for so long for it to be very possible. Yeah, in fact, let me, let me not cut you short. <laughs> Remember, there are times that I have to just say no to some people. They feel like I should come and, oh, you know, join them for this program. They are telling them I'm busy. They don't understand. Because some things that the one I explain to them at all, they don't really make any meaning from it. But just tell them, no, I'm busy. And the person wants to find out why. Why are you doing that? <laughs> what are you doing that you can't make it? Uh, so sometimes you just have to master the courage of saying, no, I can't. Uh, if not, it will, it will go against the plan that you have for the day. Wow. And you have to combine things, and sometimes that's why you're talking about multitasking that's going to be very difficult. Yeah. Because once you compact the time, you now have to do more things within that same span of time. So that's how it's really difficult. It's, it's what my brother just said the ability for you to say no. You, you should be able to prioritize your activities. Okay. Sometimes you see that you have a gym star program or a task you have to do for gym star, you have some projects. Yeah. As a student, be it a KMAC student or an external institution. So, all of these things are very, very important, but they have different deadlines. So, you, you have to prioritize them such like that they will not conflict with each other. You know that this one has a timeline up to this. So, you'll be able to arrange them in such a way that you'll not be overwhelmed. Because if you have a Two projects, let's say one is a dead, the deadline is tomorrow and the other one, the deadline is today. Then you start with one, the other one, which has a deadline tomorrow. I don't think, you see, as the deadline for today's own approaches, you'll be overwhelmed. You are not having to do some hard stuff. Yes. It's, 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 you, that means you didn't even plan well. So you have to be able to prioritize your activities very, very, very well and learn to say no to all that stuff and be mindful. I think my sister mentioned being mindful because sometimes we waste a lot of time. You complain that you don't have time, but actually we have a lot of time. Yeah. Like you are, you are just there, I don't be in it, you are just on your phone chatting. You have to be mindful at every point in time. What you are doing, you have to ask yourself, this is that thing that I am doing. Is it really helping me or is it contributing towards the goals or my plans are set for the day? And okay. Bring us. I think I think some things that's I'm coming. I, you will be on your phone, right? Yeah. You'll be on your phone chatting with people. That one too is part of your social life. So is it that in your schedule you have to um schedule time, okay, I'll be online from this period to this period, or I shouldn't come online to chat with people at all, or I don't it's, understand. It's, it's it's really impossible to say that you don't come online at all. Or you need to get just some time for that. Okay. But the one thing that I do when it comes to that is I try to do it less often. 
I sometimes go offline entirely. There were some days that I just go offline for two weeks flat. I don't use any social media accounts. I only use maybe Telegram, which is not so busy. That's a very difficult thing. That's difficult. I it's not that much. I can do it. It's not I can't do it. Like so, in days that I really feel that I have to do a lot more things, I can be online, but then I'll not refer to my phone most frequently. I'll put it on Google this day more or something so I can finish. Time. But then, as well, there are some times too that it just becomes so difficult. Any small thing, you have to reply. Is it anything? So, it just has to be on you to know how to balance sometimes. Because if you make a mistake to always be doing those side things, it will affect your plan most of the time. But it's just once in a while, you can adjust if you are someone who is able to do that flexibility. So, Zaytun, in your submission, you mentioned that it is difficult for your class to clash with solar time. But I think it's, it's not difficult. There are lots of people that have classes at solar time. Some people have classes on Fridays from 1 to 3, and we pray Juma at from 1 to 1.30. Yeah. So, should you, as part of wanting to make the religion like your priority because you are a Muslim, skip classes sometimes because of Salah? Like, should you do that? Let's say if you have a class on Friday, 1 to 3, would you always skip that class because mm -hmm. of Juma? Okay, so you are let me try. So if your class is clashing with the Juma time, right? Yes. So for me personally, right? When my classes used to clash with the Juma time, I usually go for classes. Mm. Because when the first thing is um why are you here? And yeah. we are here because of academic purpose. So we are here to study. So regardless of the fact that it's clashing with your Juma time, you don't have any choice yeah. than to go for your class. And the second thing too is that in your heart, Allah knows our near. If not because of my class, I will come for Juma. Exactly. Yeah. So in that situation, I feel like I I really don't have any other choice. Than to go for the class. Again, our university too is not um, an Islamic university, so that's why that problem is there. So. Okay, but. But we. Um, we I'm coming. Mean. They say you are in the law faculty, it's just opposite the masjid. Mm -hmm. So you can just run from class for five minutes and come and pray, or oh, it's not possible. So. Okay. So. I am going to be like very truthful to you. <laughs> very truthful to you. I haven't really had that problem. Okay. I think we've had it like once or twice. So I'm not like in a very best position to say that. But you can't say if you say five minutes, you wouldn't use that five. And then even your drama, put by a class of drama. Okay. Since I want to leave my class, my lecture, the merge, I'm going to spend approximately like six minutes at the machine, right? Yeah. I'm going to spend like 50 minutes here, and that's a lot of time. And if that is going to like um, mm -hmm. get me into yes, that's that is going to like get me into um, a problem at my faculty, that is not like the best thing to do. Because as I say, alarm is your heart. It's not because of the drama, it's not because of my lecture, I'll just come for drama. So as yes. the situation has brought itself like that, let's just maneuver our way. And it's not going to be forever. Yeah. And there are other times too that you would have the opportunity to come for the okay. Yes, me sometimes I think I I fit in almost three situations in this. Okay. There were times in my class that I didn't have time for Friday. I don't have any class for Fridays. Okay. And times that I have only tutorials. Okay. And times that I have class. Okay. So this that I have class. Then, if it's a main class, what I do is I go for the class, but it's there for Juma. I leave. I want to like, yeah, oh, it's quite easy. That is it. Then I come back again. But I think even that time that we used to have class there, I didn't have motorbike. So I'll just leave and then go and breathe. And sometimes I'll even come back. It should take the class. <laughs> <laughs> but sometimes with tutorials, for me, I think this time like this, I will do tutorials on Friday. So I have multiple Friday by sale. 
<laughs> I don't know for class. Oh, but, but I make sure I will for the main class so that if there is anything I can follow. Yeah. But then also, then also, let me add the last instance. That is when <laughs> <laughs> that is why I don't have class. Then maybe I just have to come for Juma and then that is it. Yes. Oh, I think I have a different experience with that. I think it was one semester, first year and second semester, which I had an hour, one hour class on, at exactly the time for Juma, one to two. <laughs> and the single test, it's one like to two, exactly one hour. It's so, like, so it's like a tempting you, man. I was like, <laughs> this class, me, I will not go. And actually, I didn't go for most of them. I think throughout the semester, I went to that class, like, twice or three times. And it's actually a three hour course, but I think the, before Friday, we, we attend the two hour and class. Yeah. So, so I didn't sleep there on that class. I think the only thing that made me go to that class was because of this and attendance, because that one we were informed. So I went for it and I guess we thought I have to come up yeah, with the class. Yeah, if I don't perceive any stressful assignments coming on board. So all the, <laughs> ones, that, all the ones that you missed, it didn't go against you? Well, it's up to me whether it's go against you or not. So because I have to make sure that I inquire from my course mates what was taught. Okay. And I have to make sure I, I do a comeback before the next class. I think that is why I, I have the conditions. <laughs> For me, when I miss a class, I really ask what was taught. Hey. Uh, so how do you come up? Oh. <laughs> 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 Inshallah. <laughs> okay. there, there are times that I'll miss class and I'll not bother to ask. And I'll later realize that it was assignment that was being given. Okay. And that is why sometimes I get to sweat a bit. <laughs> but still, I do assignments. Later on, it's those exam. Then I go to my TAs in the class. I have TAs. Then I go to the and they sort me out. And that's how I read. Okay, oh, so I think um, at the beginning. I and that's how I read. Okay, okay, so oh, I think um, at the beginning, I think it was Zaytun. You mentioned that um, for you to, you are supposed to have a holistic life so that. Because it's not only your academics that is going to help you after school. You are going to have, you are going to use your social life also outside there. So if, so if I am active, let's say I'm a debater or I'm a politician and I take it so serious, but I'm also balancing my academics and my religion. And then maybe I end up with a second class lower or second class upper. Is it good? Once I have a very active social life, is it good? <laughs> <laughs> yes, um, I personally know some people who left school. Mm -hmm. They didn't have the best of classes. Okay. And the best of class we see first class, right? Okay. But we have something beyond first class. I think it's first class. Mm -hmm. okay. first class. Yes. yes. They didn't go with a first class. They left with upper. And upper is just it's not too bad. In fact, it's not bad. <laughs> it's not bad. What is bad about upper? It's bad. How? It's not a lot bad. of people have upper, so it's bad. A lot of people. A lot yes, of people that have upper. That's why social life comes. That's why social life. So, so that's why it makes you a different species among them. But if you, you were, have your if you were a first class student, you also had that social life. You would... Aha. So. Have you been able to give us an instance where you have that first class and have the social life as well? <laughs> okay. You get it. It's the thing is you are trying to balance. Sometimes you have to use an opportunity to cost some more. Okay. You get it. And but that's what happens when it comes to being a being a holistic student. Okay. You can't fully get everything. But the little that you're able to build all together will make you outstanding. Yeah. Because the world is multi diverse yeah. If you only leave school with your first class and you don't have anything, you suffer. Okay. Yes. There, there was uh, my very own brother, Shamula. He was a speaker when he was in school. When he, was in school. Yeah. he didn't finish school, but he had a chance to post people to do a chance to visit at various areas in the country. Okay. So you also have that chance? I have that chance. Yeah, yeah. That's so don't worry, but I'm going to tell you. I'll charge you. Join me. 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 Join you have to build that social life here okay. and that linked him to the external world, the corporate world. So when he left, it was very easy for him to land a place to do natural service and also put others. His own, his, his, own, his own friend in the room when I was with them. He's one who would like talking. Okay. You get it. 
So someone like that, how he has to go and maneuver his way out in the corporate world. It was just easy for him to post things and work. And they are all surviving now. Okay. It's about being able to do it so that you don't neglect that area entirely. Mm-hmm. Okay. So that when it gets to a critical point where they see that we want someone who has academia, someone who has social life as well, then you can fit. Exactly. So it's about it's, it's a serious business of planning. Okay. Right? So that you don't look at one and forget the other. Okay. But then the very one that I will not advise anyone to go into is to do only academia and forget for social life. Okay. That is most is the least of choices you can make. But you will advise someone to advise do that even if, if it means that even if it means it means that you build other aptitudes aside academia and leave it an upper is better for you than leave it only a first class. Okay. Are you saying um, that because you are not a first class student? No, definitely not. I, I was a first class student. I lost, it. <laughs> I lost it. Okay, so okay. Usama to answer because yes. Khalid is not really political. So you see in this school it's not easy to do agenda. Yeah. You have to talk to a lot of people, shake hands with a lot of people, yeah. hug a lot of people. The two you were the law students secretary yes. and then Usama you are the speaker for the so how do you balance your religion and then your social life such that in as much as you are being social you are not compromising on your religious values so Usama KNST and uh, parliament speaker how, how did you do it how did you do your agenda did you have people keep in mind I think it's a kind of that I have to be frank mm-hmm. right I have, a, I have a fear, and that is being somewhere that people look up to you, okay. and everything that you take, you do, it's looked at with an eye of godliness. Okay. Do you get it? Or, for example, because of your chief imam, anything that you do, yeah. the Muslims have an eye on you. Yes. Yeah. Do you get it? If you flop like that, they, ah, you mean chief imam? Ah, <laughs> but. They, they don't give you some benefit of the doubt because of where you find yourself in the social environment. Okay. At the same time, I'm not saying that you should compromise on your social, I mean your religious values for social gains. Okay. There were times that I was in a very tight corner and I still face them on daily basis. But then sometimes it's just impossible to say I don't do some of the things. Okay. There were times that I, sh- I shook hands. Yes, I can see because of the issue or this setting, I'll say that I've never shaken a hand of a lady. No, I've done it before. There are times that you had. I had, I, I can't remember. Hey. I had, <laughs> because the thing is, I am not the one that will bring myself. Okay. Do you get it? Someone just said, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> <laughs> and and what, what she just says that I saw you. So when she comes, Mr. The speaker, and then you say, Go out with me. I, don't um, I don't know how polite you can be at that point to say that okay. I won't take this handshake. I don't know how polite you are. I mean, I with most of these ladies that come into contact in that because if it's a guy, there's really not a problem. Yeah. The lady comes to you in that manner and already she's emotional, right? She's coming with emotions already. Okay. So she's coming like that. Then you say, I don't know how polite you can be to say I won't give you the handshake. Okay. But I do it and try to. Just for the weakness in my heart that it's a weakness. If had it got the way you wouldn't have done it. I think yeah. you being a guy, it's quite easier. But Zay too, how did you do your agenda? Like how were you able to pass through? Oh, okay, for me I have been like I didn't like really face those issues. Okay. Because even before I went for um agenda, anytime you want to shake me or do something I'm not supposed to do, I saw it at all. I can't or yeah, I just told them no. Okay. So they knew. You already, they already knew. Set yes, I had already set that boundary for them. Okay. So they knew that I wasn't going to like shake them and do all this stuff. And I haven't like been in a situation where somebody like oh yes. And sometimes too, as Sama was saying, people will just come and they'll say, like, it will just be there, then just random. Then somebody wants to hide you. So it is something that people will do, but I feel like for the individual people like Usama and me, we are saying no, we are already doing that thing. So I feel like we haven't really gotten there. So if people want to go for agenda, 
definitely they would face those issues. It yeah. would be smooth. In fact, even away from agenda, there were times in my class, there was this day, it was the last day of lecture for one particular course, and the lecturer said that he doesn't believe in this online uh, assessment for the lecturers, and so we want, he wants us to assess him in class. So he was calling some of the students in the class randomly. They called some one day, and one day they just saw me, and he called me. I mean, my class, they knew me, and they gave me fans. <laughs> you see that thing? So he gave me the microphone, and I stood up, as usual. I started embracing from the beginning, towards the end, I blasted him very well. And he liked the way I dealt with him. So he was happy how I dealt with him. You get it? And the class were happy, they were, they were so happy that I was able to deal with him in that professional manner. So they were very, very happy. After the class, there was this lady, you. She just came, happy, Usama, you. I want to be like something like that. And I was, my hand was going and it was as if I was shaking. I was, I was, at that point, I was, I was like, I was freezing. You see that thing? Okay. Uh, so mostly, so. the thing is, it's, it's not a matter of perfection. We are not there yet. Okay. Uh, so we realize the flaw. Yes, we realize the flaw. Especially in the environment we find ourselves. But where I find a chance to tell you that I don't shake hands, I do it. So that you don't tend to next time. You don't come and then do it again. Okay. Or if, for example, this time you come and I give you, I find, I make sure that I tell you that I don't shake hands. Okay. So next time you see me try it, <laughs> I'll just do like I'm not even seeing it. Okay. Yes. And my classmates, in fact, I ask them and they know it, I don't shake. They call me shake. I don't shake hands. <laughs> because they, if you're calling me shake and you want me to shake your hand, what's the mean? I will shake already. I don't have to shake you. Bass. Bass. <laughs> Bass. Bass. <laughs> okay, so moving to our next question. So, um, marriage is part of your social life, right? So, for you to be a holistic student, is it, will it be okay if, like, as you go to class and all that, you see someone that you like, you go forward, and then make the advances and start talking about marriage, or that will you take you more? away. I'm looking at all of you. <laughs> okay, I'm looking at you. I'm looking at you. I'm looking at you. Okay, I think I'll take care. Okay, the, the men are shy, so we'll get to the lady. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so for this question of you eyeing somebody you would want to marry, mm -hmm. so the first thing is ask yourself: Are you ready for that? You see, sometimes the emotions doesn't ask that question. So you are just eyeing the person without having the intention of marriage. You have that intention, but even if you are not even ready for marriage, God, the emotions are still there. Okay, so let's talk on the on the side that you have the emotion. Okay. Okay, so you having the emotion or the feeling of you wanting somebody to be your spouse. Okay, it's natural. It's natural. It's natural. So should you I... make advances or... No, no, that's where you having the intention comes in. Okay. So if you are not ready and you don't have the capacity to like make that person your bride or your groom, I don't understand why you should move forward. You should yeah. go a step further than you I even if you even, even if you like start eyeing the person and you know you wouldn't want to marry that person at that time, I think you should stay away from the person. So have you experienced that before? I am somebody. I would rather keep that part. Okay, if it was emotional, <laughs> but she keeping it, it means okay, okay. But it's I not, it's so. okay, you don't have to explain. <laughs> you don't have to explain. Okay. But, but with this question, I think that's where the concept of being holistic comes to play. Okay, okay. You are holistic, so <laughs> before you go to that side, you have to make sure that you are ready. Say like that. You be able to balance that side. Yeah, you are ready. Like, if you are not ready and you go to that field, no, what's the you, you have, you your, life, your life will be so unbalanced. Like, what's the so you be able to like, um, so to, before like, you like, you so wait, 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 like, Usama, what do you money? think? Wait, Usama, what do you think? No, I wanted to understand. They say you are ready, ready. I wanted them to de define the scope of everything that you go into. Yeah, everything that you go into. You have to assess. Exactly. If your academic is taking a toll on you and yeah. you're looking for another emotional, <laughs> maybe that one will help you. There's a way one day, you know, it gives them mental consciousness. Yeah, like you, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so answer, <laughs> like, you go and answer, answer the question. I answer the question. Yes. So, well, uh, they all say really, there's really, there's really nice. Okay, what do you think? But I think 
It depends. Okay, on, on you. Please keep it short. I see. Okay. <laughs> then you should have made it very short. Okay. See? So it depends on you. Yeah. If you are someone who feels you can do the right thing, I understand. Okay. You can do what you You get it. Because everything that you have to do is an intention that you have to pick. Yeah. You understand? You may not do something because you don't have the intention of it. But once you find the intention of it, then make sure it's a sincere one. If you're ready to do the right thing, Islam doesn't forbid us from expressing our love. Okay. But how? For example, I see you and I love you. Why? I, I, Is it I for don't... example, or like you are just saying it? You should finish it. <laughs> oh, <I'm> a, <laughs> for example, I see you. For example, I say for example, okay, so you don't have to okay. give me the first thing. Okay. So for example, I see you and I like you. Okay. Or in our time, you see crash. Okay. We are getting that way. <laughs> so I crash and... Okay. I really take some time to analyze that. If it is really a crash or I can take it to a next level. Okay. Do you get this? More, more than a brother in Islam. I have more than a brother in Islam. <laughs> and once I feel maybe I can take it to a next level, it doesn't mean I should just come to you and start talking to you or not. Okay. Wanting to marry you or start vibing you in some way. No, Islam is really a practical religion. So, it gives us how in conclusion, in you conclusion. can add that as part of being a holistic student. Oh, yes. Okay. Because it's part of the social life. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. It's not. It's, it's impossible that you be in an environment of this mm -hmm. sort and you, you will not see someone you like. Okay. See, yeah, in summary, that is, that is what are you are going to, so that are going to deal with in that? In summary, you are eyeing someone right now. No, relax. <laughs> what are you going to deal with that? Or you take an action? It's the possibility so, is there so is something like that. So you are on the same grounds. <coughs> you eye someone before and you moved from it because you are not ready. Okay. No, you are so ready. Okay. In summary, let's move to the next question. Let's move to the next question. So, um, Khalid, how has your involvement in Jinsa contributed to your social life? Well, I think I've actually indirectly answered this question in my, one of my previous okay. questions. Yes, then you can just where we come rush. we come to Jinsa programs. Okay. Already we are Muslims. So the programs are being organized like that the contents of the program are Islamic. You don't go against Islam. Islam, the tradition of Islam and everything. So already that one has catered for their religious life. Okay. And even the content of the program is like that. It always reminds you of you being a Muslim. Okay. And aside that, you come here, meet brothers, okay. you interact with them. I didn't mean, I don't think if not for James, I would know any of you here. It's true James that like we all come through James, I know a lot of people. If if I look at my friends I've, I've made in KUSC, aside my classmates and those in my faculty or college, okay. the rest, other colleges are from Jimsa. Okay. So it has really helped me expand my network, okay. meet a lot of people, and it has contributed to my social life. So in conclusion, be active in Jimsa. Exactly, you have to be active. Okay, so Khalid, in okay. trying to balance all what we've been talking about, Mm. Is there any instance when or where you've had to make a very difficult choice between your academic, social, or religious life? Is there any point where, or any challenge, major challenge mm. you face? A lot of instances, actually. Mm -hmm. Because there are times you have to decide what to do next. And you, you see that you have some conflicts amongst all that you want to do. Maybe it as a student or as a gym cycle in UC member or a team. Maybe there is a program organized by GIMSA. I have to come. Then I look at ALS. I'm an ALS student and mostly our attacks are one hour, the sorry, 24 hour deadlines, maybe from 6 a.m. to the next 6 a.m. So as then some of GIMSA's programs are organized at night. So I have to check, will I be able to make it? Should I go to Jimsa's program or I should focus up on my projects and finish it? So in this scenario, it's very, very tough for me. So sometimes I have to plan before and make sure I handle my tasks during the day. And also, we have some of the tasks that, some challenges that I can't do anything about it. I just have to, and let's go of one of them, like having social, Sorry, your academic 
activities interfere with your results. Like you have an exams during it. I think I faced this last year in my second year, and I have to go around the exams. It's a very tough choice to make, but being a Muslim, you've fasted, and it's time for you, you have to go and celebrate, and you have to go around the exams and make the celebrations. So these are some of the few challenges I've been going through. But you could, you could have decided to come and pray so that you throw the paper and come and write this again. Okay, so let me add something to that. Okay. I'm sure some of you know I stayed on campus in first year. Yeah. And yeah. some I think first semester of second year. And in my quest of being able to fit in the university, okay. you mentioned all these things that we have to incorporate okay. being students of the university, building the social life and then other stuff as well. Yeah. Particularly, it was just unfortunate for me that I had very wicked <laughs> roommates. <laughs> and why is it wicked? They are not wicked in, as in their personality, they are wicked. Mm. But how they carry themselves, very wickedly. Okay. Because the very time that you are pushing to do some things, that's when they come in full. So almost every time, they have made you restless. The next time they are bringing ladies. Next time, they are, they are bashing in the room, they are making wasteful arguments, arguments in the room, just talking anyhow, and they don't do it at wise hours. The time that you want to sleep, that's when they will do it. <laughs> it's like, they, I don't know why they, they were just intentional about doing it to pay me or something. Because at that time, I was in first house, and, and I was the first year, I didn't have any confidence to even come out to report them or something. Mm -hmm. I feel like right now, if it is now that I, f I find myself in such a situation, like everyone will be you know, yeah. you know, <laughs> Like I suffered that time back. Okay. So you remember when I was in second year, at the point I had to leave campus. And you had to run I had to run away for my life. <laughs> because you'd be in a room. That was, that was wise. Yeah, yeah, I had to leave. A room where you are with your guys. Then ladies come and sleep between that same room. Interesting. And I don't know. <laughs> I was trying to fathom how to come to cope with such an environment. Mm, yeah. The lady coming to sleep with you guys in the room. Well, I've not experienced it anywhere in life before. Mm -hmm. Being in the same room with a lady sleeping in the night. Like, I don't get it. Okay. So I couldn't cope finally. I had to leave campus. It was very tough for me. And I had to go and stay with her brother. We in Kuti have to trek on campus almost every day for classes. I had to do that. It was, the, the pain was just too much. It was just unbearable at the point. Oh. So I think perhaps in my university experience, it should be the worst of experience I've faced so far. It's a big challenge that I had, having to deal with roommates in that manner. Mm -hmm. And finally breaking it, break it off entirely mm -hmm. because I couldn't contain it. Mm -hmm. and so so and this sometimes it's very difficult to cope with these variables that I'm mentioning. Okay. Yeah. So um, Zaytun, do you have any advice for our younger brothers and sisters who are at home but are skeptical about losing their faith when they come to the university. Anything for them? Yes. I think um, if you ask me one of like, my greatest achievements since I came to KNSD, I would say joining things at KNSD. Because that has like, taught me a lot of things, academia-wise, religious-wise, social life-wise. It's like... <clears throat> like the best thing that happened to me so we are having the university so i don't know why people have that notion but in the university um there's this thing that you can go wayward like you can go off the track yeah. in the same way you can like strengthen your deal on campus because yeah. the university like provides us that avenue to like practice our religious activities our um, things that are religiously um, based. Okay. So if you are coming to KNUSD, in your head, you are coming to KNUSD to stay. But in KNUSD, there's an association that you can join to better that aspect of your life. That's your religion. Because okay. even if you are somebody that is self-disciplined, and maybe you can do everything when it's when it's time to do it, like or you can be your room and recite your Quran and do all those things. Trust me, you need constant reminder. You need um, an environment where you will be reminded of Allah and everything related to your religion. So 
it's, it's a good thing. I'll advise them to come to the university, not just coming to the university, but once they are on campus, they should join James Akin University. I think, um, no, I'm coming. Let me, I'm coming. Something just to tell you. You see, there were some times that I remember before I went to senior high school, uh, my parents had that kind of thoughts. Okay. They thought that if I come to senior high school, we're going to have some influence and stuff like that. But then the senior high school that I attended, that was senior high school. It was like an Islamic school because Muslim Muslims were the majority there. Yeah. And so it helped us to remain steadfast. Mm-hmm. Particularly what binded us more and helped us was the gym self there, just like here as well. And so it's about the individual self and then the parents involved being able to know which choice is best for them at the point. Mm-hmm. If, for example, you're choosing amongst universities in Ghana and you find out that this particular university they, they do so much immoral things, then it is just wise that you don't send your wife or your child there. Okay. They get it. Just like wanting to choose between KUSD and Legon. <laughs> <laughs> the obvious choice is KUSD. Okay. Because Legon, yeah. They'll come to KUSD because okay. this is where the Islamic, the Islamic community is, that is so developed. Okay. It's, <laughs> so it's, it's just why they bring your world to care okay, so that okay. the, the benefit is being in that Islamic community. The person who gets it, that's not a benefit to live on. Why should I be bad? Okay, sadly, <laughs> we are coming to the end of the conversation. So, last insights what would you like to share? Any take home message you want to leave for our listeners? Please keep it very brief. So, who should I start with? Let me start with Usama. Okay, the only thing I should keep it very brief, but I give you very in depth questions. I was trying to be very brief, uh, like you said. So, yeah, you want insights, right? To yeah. anyone who is coming to university. No, not oh. that. On what we've discussed. On what we've discussed. Yeah, your last message. Okay. All right, so my, my last message is try to, as an individual, be diverse. Okay. Right? You can't be an island. Okay. And get some principles that you do by some values that you cherish. Okay. They are very, very important. Set for yourself what you want to do at a particular time and do them and do them very well. Because right now I feel like some of the things that I do right now, I'm able to do right now, I didn't be able to do it some three years back. Like right now, I'll be somewhere else. Not like I mean not not like outside KBS, but like I'll be somewhere. A different oh, and you know, Perhaps. Or I've been getting some money yeah. as I'm making up as on campus. Even though I still do and then get I feel like and I started that earlier and I've been able to do better. Okay. You get it. On campus here, aside the academia that we all do, the social life as well. We also do other things beyond that. You get it. There was I, I told myself in first year that I want to be for leave school, my parents don't even pay my school fees. I don't like it. And even calling my dad to tell him that I want to send me some money. I found it very difficult. I was telling my mom, she was telling my parents because I'm going. I don't like it. Just make him money. Please send me money. And I don't like doing it. So I had to find ways of getting other things to know the other countries. Okay. Even though my, myself and my dad, we have this halal farm, and that's what we do aside my dad's other business. You pay for us. Well, let's see. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what we do aside my dad's business. Then on my own, I do other things as well that I don't make public. Okay. I write for people. I do assignments for people. I have students outside the country that I do assignments for. Mm-hmm. And I charge them and get some money. Okay. I do other things online. Do you get it? But they are not public. Okay. Do you get it? And so I want to advise as a Muslim student, the holistic Muslim student, try to incorporate all this stuff. Okay. So that if I develop your academia, you do it. Okay. If I bring something, if I bring something, if I bring something, if I bring something, Make sure you engross yourself into it. Okay. Then once you do it, other things that make you outstanding, you can do as well. Right. Make sure you are able to build a good social social environment. Make sure you are able to be that Muslim who is connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And make sure before the demand that will settle, the demand will settle down in your heart, you have what to make it settle. Get some okay. money. Okay. Let's don't compromise on all these things that I mentioned. Okay. Make sure you so, give a good balance of that. 
for all your financial issues, you can save some He has lots of money. So, Kali, <laughs> let's hear from you. So, with that, I think, as he said, you should not be on one hand and you should try and socialize. And I also say you shouldn't be on some day island. Some people have goals. They want to, I want to do this, but they say someday, someday. They keep on saying someday. You never come from that someday. <laughs> Just get to work and do the, what you, you have to do. Because you want to get to a specific destination and you are just saying someday, someday. You never get there. You have to try and do it. And also, you have to, to learn like. a lot of skills. Like, not really a lot, but like, at least as a university student, you have to try and learn at least one skill, especially IT skills, because we are in a technological era and you have to at least one IT skill such as typing that one too you are a student you'll be writing assignments and you'll be punching your keyboard like it's not you have to you have to know these basic skills graphic designing web development and just like you say have made this easier especially you being a Muslim you have the IT and the would come you have to at least we have three courses okay. now we have Four. So at least get one skill and perfect it. So, so that's my advice for So you also pay for ads. You are advertising here and you pay. I'm actually so, advertising in yeah. Okay, so my advice to students on campus is to plan and stay on campus to incorporate all the aspects you're talking about, the religious aspects, the social life, and your academics. And as my brothers have already said, try to like move with people. Don't be an island. You can't survive if you're alone. There are times that tend to get really tough and need people to fall back on. So yes, that is very important. And you have to stay consistent in whatever you do because it's super, super necessary. You can't have a plan without executing it. No. So that is my advice. Thank you. So thank you all for listening to us to this point. We've had an incredible discussion and I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. So to my guests, thank you very much for accepting to join us. Your um your conversation, the various thoughts you brought up has made this um whole conversation enriching. So thank you very much. So to my to my audience, I hope that whatever that you heard today, you are going to reflect on it. Know that it is not about um, being perfect in all that they've said. It's about finding harmony amidst diversity. So you have to find what works for you because we all have unique path. Find what works for you and then work with it. So till the next episode, like, share, subscribe, and then let's keep the conversation going. Wassalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.